This video is brought to you in part by Rickard Art. Rickard Art designs packaging, logos, posters, invitations, and more. He also does murals for your home or business. Check him out at rickard-art.com. Hey, what's up everybody? It's day 14 and we are we're about an hour away from midnight again and it's almost like I'm just realizing that oops I didn't record anything I need to record something every day because I promised 60 days recording just to kind of give you guys updates constantly and this is a, a good way for me to be front and center and put my self out there so Thank you again if you're watching this, and thank you for subscribing if you subscribed. I, I know if you haven't, or if you haven't, I, I, I get notices. Uh, like the video, dislike it, tell me why you disliked it, tell me why you liked it. You know, uh, find me on Twitter, find me on, uh, you can find me, I'm everywhere. Uh, but you're here to hear about me and developing games and yes that's 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 Maya back there and there's Liss back there well list and then I have a little notebook up right now and uh, let's see what does it say uh, game demo ideas and I, I have several of these uh, little notebooks but I started another one and this is more immediate to this particular uh, demo and, and because I've thought of several different demos for this game and it was just you know I, I kept looking at the same ideas over and over again and I just finally said yeah let's move those over I, I really kind of want a fresh perspective so let's just start a new one and so I did. And the first one I have up there is something about uh, events. Events that happen in the game. Events that will, well, in the demo. Events that will drive the character in the direction which I want him to go. I want the player to go. Because, obviously it's a demo. I want to make something, I want to give people a taste of this world and to see if people want more of it so so many people <laughs> go about making big big games and they never finish them or they get so far and they go further than they should have before showing it off and it's not liked people don't want it and I found that out with the first couple of games I've made and, and got them out there in the public and some I spent a couple of years making and then uh, some I spent for example around 12 days making so the idea here of course is to get something made and I have worked on aspects of the game up till now certain things that you can see on the Patreon and, and, and whatnot, but the actual game itself, no, you guys haven't seen it yet. And you're probably thinking, well, this is day 14, man. When the hell are you gonna start working on actually a game? Because you got like 45 days before you need to deliver something at GDEX or or, you know, what are you going to do? And that's an excellent question. Which is why I am specifically targeting a certain part in the game. Now, again, this is the beginning of what would be the full game. This is also a very small portion of the world in the game. And with that being the case... 
I don't have to do a ton of work, but I want to make sure, well, it, it's still a ton of work and it's a ton of work in a short amount of time. Don't get me wrong. Let me backtrack on that. What I do want to say is that even though it's a ton of work, it's not like I'm making a full game here. I'm making something to give you again, a taste of what it will be like to be in this world. The idea is you pick up the controller because this it will be on the PC, but it's just something about a controller to me. It, it, there were, I don't know. It, it's my first experience with the game was with an Atari 2600 joystick. If you don't know what that is, then I'm sorry. Google it. But that was my first experience was with a controller. And it was, I mean, a joystick controller, whatever. It was something that you held in your hand and you used to control spaceships, spherical men that ate little white circles and chased after ghosts when, when they were, you know, ate power-ups. Drove square tanks, you know, it, the list goes on and on. But it was always the interactivity of holding something and controlling something. I, I have never felt connected whatsoever with a keyboard and mouse to a game. I haven't. And I'll, I purposely buy PC games like Steam. I, I would try to bring up my Steam. <laughs> Screw it. Because you guys are going to be like, he doesn't get anything on Steam. Yeah, well. Again. Oh, you, you can sort of see it. Uh, it says library and it's only showing installed. How about just games? Can, I don't, oh, you guys can't really see that. Uh, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to turn here. Well, no, I don't. I can just move it over. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to just scroll here. Yeah. This is my steam library. I'm sure others like have a lot more. But I'm just making sure the scroll's done. Okay. So, yeah, and then I have a small amount down here at the bottom of VR. But, yeah, that's right. I play PC games. And, and a lot of these were released for the consoles. But, again, graphics, processor speed, 60 frames per second. Plus, you know, this is where it's at. I, I like console games. Console exclusivity is terrible. You know, Nintendo's all about the the same idea that basically Apple has, which is this closed ecosystem. And I just keep thinking, gosh, and I, I, I'm not the only one to think this. If they stuck Zelda or Metroid or Mario on all the platforms... Oh my gosh, could you imagine the sheer amount of money that Nintendo would pull in? It would be ridiculous. It would be insane. I mean, and I'm sure they found this out already with the amount of downloads they've, they've had with Super Mario Run on mobile platforms. Come on, guys, open your eyes. I mean, Sega did this. This is how Sega is still around. This is how they're becoming significant again. I mean, they, they got some big plans coming out and a lot of people don't realize that yet unless you've been paying attention. Sega is going to be coming back with a vengeance as long as they stay out of the hardware race and just look at software and platform development. That's that's all that matters. And they'll, and they'll be back. What, what all of this is alluding to, what, what I'm talking about here is the sheer fact that I am making a game to be used with a controller. I'm not even developing it in any way whatsoever to be used with a keyboard and mouse. That is not what this is. 
I could not even imagine playing Uncharted with a keyboard and a mouse. It's just, that's my preference. I'm getting this out there. This is going to be a controller-based game. And as such, it will also play very similar to games like Uncharted. Not much of an inventory system at all. Uh, Order 1886, or 1860, 1886. That sounds right. Yeah, we'll stick with that. You guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know, I, I've just named off two PlayStation games. But the point is that I want to bring a Pixar interactive experience as I see it in my head. Now, granted, I want it to be fun, you know, I want the kind of interactivity to be the kind that you would have with Uncharted. Simplistic, feels good, running, ducking, covering, shooting, everything feels good. I'm not looking to clone it, I'm looking at it as inspiration. That's it. You know, there are, I'm going to sneeze here in a second. There are several aspects of Order 1886 that I'm going the I'm going to be pulling from in respect to interactivity within the environment. Same thing with Uncharted, uh, The Last of Us. Um, these are games that have impacted me on an emotional level, where I've gone back and replayed. The Last of Us, I, I don't know how many times I've replayed The Last of Us all the way to the end. And it just strikes a chord. And I'm just, this is it. Some of you guys, you love your Overwatch. You you love, this new game is going to come out, Lawbreakers. I enjoy Battlefield, but I'm I, I don't live and breathe it i don't say gosh i can't wait for the next one to come out multiplayer i had a huge experience with a, a, a huge bad experience with multiplayer all the way back in the days of the dreamcast with fantasy star online and it, it's a really long story totally for another time but the thing about it is it left me feeling vulnerable and not only that i realized that i wasn't that good multiplayer wise online i was not as good as some other people and it's just the way it is right just the way it is it's the nature of the beast and and, and so I stopped playing a lot of multiplayer games online. Just didn't. I, I saw no reason to get angry and upset about it because it was just, I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to grind hour after hour, day after day to become the best at Call of Duty. That's not me. But again, I am more artistically inclined than that foray. You know, I, I just, that's not my arena anyway all this is coming back to me saying that i only have to make a small portion of the game for the demo for gdex i don't have to do a million things i have to make say four city blocks four or five city blocks that's how i'm kind of thinking of it maybe six um, and then a, a, a big like square and you know Bloodborne for those I'm naming a ton of PlayStation games and, and the reason is because Sony not Sony itself the developers that target the PlayStation platform or our first party developers like Santa Monica, things like that. You just, you know, the, the Uncharted series, uh, Naughty Dog, Last of Us, um, 
uh, Gorilla with uh, Killzone. That's a fun brand. A lot more fun than than Gears. Sorry, people. It is. Uh, let's see here. You know, I said Bloodborne. What else? God of War. Come on. I mean, seriously, you look at the PlayStation exclusives and you're like, wow, this plat. at least for me, I look at that and say, if I was going to pick a console, it would, it's PlayStation just because of the kind of games that I play and I love. And that's what I want to do. So in doing that, most of those games have a narrative based story or feature to them where they're based on a story and the story drives the gameplay not the gameplay drives the story and i feel that for a game when the metal gear solid series was going on before the before phantom pain and ground zeros and i don't count the before the phantom pain I enjoyed those games. And he started going a little wayward with Peace Walker. But Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, even 4 with its crazy convoluted story. All of those had a narrative drive to them. All the games I like, I, I've named them. They have a narrative drive. I, I love the game uh, Until Dawn, which is another PlayStation 4 exclusive story 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 keep me involved keep me playing you know that's the silent hill series i love the silent hill series because it's it's story driven uh you know three was really the last decent game you know but the point is the stories drive me and that is going to be the case here as well sure i'll have goals obstacles uh, points of interest, you know, things that you will have to do to, you know, make it to the next part, right? Objectives that you have to meet, but they need to be fluid. They need to go with the game where it's not like you're saying, oh, I need to go do this. I need to go to do that. Now, there are plenty of games out there. The um, Dead Island series and then the follow-up game, which... I can't think of I see it um, I see the cover dead something or light anyway it, it was their follow-up wake up I know I've talked too long it was their follow-up uh, their you know sequel so to speak and it's all objective based there are a lot of games out there that are open world sandbox games that are fetch quests. And I don't like that. I don't like that when, gosh, I really wanted to like Borderlands. Borderlands, Rage, Mad Max, uh, you know, any of those fetch quest games. Go here, do that. I hate Destiny. I'm, I'm sure I just blew somebody's mind right there. I hate Destiny. I loved the Halo games. I thought Bungie, again, they were narrative driven. Then they went into Destiny, and I'm just like, the, it feels like the story was tacked on. Hey, go do this. Hey, go do that. You know, there's this one mission where, uh, and I'm not that far in the game. I, I get that. You're probably like, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? Destiny's great. I made it to this part where I had to go to like pass an asteroid belt or another system or something like that. I got to a weird looking lady, uh, and she's like, you need to go here. And so I was like, okay. So I go there, I get the thing she wants and then I take it back to her. I say, Hey, this is what I found out. It was like news or something. You can tell I haven't played it for a long time. And then she's like, go back there again and do this. And they come back and see me. And they go back there again. And come back. And there again. And come back. I, it, it wouldn't be so bad if the damn load times didn't take forever to go from the planet back to the ship. The ship back to the planet. The ship back to the the 
back to Earth or whatever, Citadel, whatever the... Oh, wait, that's Mass Effect. Anyway, going to all the places, the load times kill the fetch questing. It kills it. I want a full, seamless environment when, when the thing loads in from start to the end point of whatever level you're on, the thing loads seamless. No load times. Nada. And keeping it truncated, broken up into blocks, is the best way to do that. So, yes, it's going to be about six, seven blocks, maybe eight blocks. I know I keep adding. I'm just thinking of the length of a block in my head. Uh, buildings can be modular, you know, especially when you're running through city streets, getting shot at, things like that. You're not really stopping to look at buildings. And again, it's a demo, right? So you can say, hey, this is alpha footage or beta footage or sigma footage. Or <laughs> I'm really tired and I'm going to bed after this. But the point is that it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want you to get a feeling of of this world if you like the combat if you like the characters if you you know like the idea of the story because obviously i'm not going to be able to, it's not going to be blade runner where you know you load up and it's like this long or highlander one of them i think both of them actually you know and you're probably too old you know if you're watching this to to know those movies well blade runner is coming out again the sequel but the point is that I'm not going to have this big, long thing that shows up. You're going to be thrown right into the action. And if I can't get this done, I have never used Sequencer in Unreal at all. And the way I'm looking at it is I'm going to build the demo. And then if, if I have time somehow at the end, like two, three weeks, maybe two, I think two, I could probably do it in two, two weeks to cut together a cutscene of the beginning where I'm showing the story of how you ended up where you're at in the demo, then that, so be it. Otherwise I'll do, do some stupid movie comic book, you know, sequence storyboards or something like that. But I'm, you know, the guys at Epic are, are trying so hard to make it easy for for content creators, for game developers to, to provide a full uh, interactive experience, right? And so that's why they have Sequencer built in. That's why they're trying to get animation built in. You know, you modify your animation within Unreal. You know, you don't have to keep jumping back out to your you know, content creator software, Maya, Max, um, Houdini, Moto, Blender, doesn't matter. You can do it right inside there. I'm not crazy, but you know, hey, the arm could just be bent up a little more in, you know, just tweak that real quick and you're done, you know. But yes, I am going to start laying out a level tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, it's 11.30, and I'm going to be stopping this video, but that's right, tomorrow, I'm going to be starting to lay out a level. Laying that out, isn't that exciting? I know that's why you guys waited, and I'm sorry I keep putting up this hand right here where, where one of my lights is, but... I do want to start working on laying out the level, get a feel for it. Of course, I can run around already, you know, in, in a basic level, but uh, how to get my grasp on, on the scaling. I found a way, a very, very easy way to make sure my scale is correct within Maya, which is why it's up, and start laying that out. And we're just going to start prototyping the level. There you go. Look at that. 20, 24 and a half minutes of a game development talk. You guys have been waiting for it. I brought it. This is it. I mumbled for 
25 minutes of, of talking about stuff. Now, non-game stuff, because that's how I'm, I think I'm going to just do it from now on. I'm going to talk about game stuff first, and then, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, I do have uh, a couple of projects I'm working on on the side. But other than that, it's game dev time, baby. So that's it. And if you made it all the way to the end here, I really appreciate you watching. And I'm, we're, we're going to start making the magic happen. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking the dislike or like button and sharing the good word. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. That was itching real bad. Oh, see ya! A huge thanks goes out to our patrons, as this video and all the other videos in the series wouldn't be possible without you. Thank you. And speaking of patrons, if you feel like you want to support us, come over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Games. This video and the other videos in the series and the more videos to come just wouldn't get made without the help, love, and support from our patrons. You'll also be able to see the goals that we set, a reward system, and all the updates. Donations start at just $1, and that guarantees you not only an exclusive monthly illustration, but it also guarantees you to be one of the first people to play Jack Hunter as we develop the game. Thanks again for checking out our Patreon page. If you like this video, you know what to do. Subscribe to see more videos just like this by hitting that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.